Hi again. As you probably know, this is Jim Clary. I'm not going to take much of your time here because I know you want to really get down to learning how to download those uh, metadata files. Um, Sarah's going to take you through the process. Uh, some of it may be a little dense as it was in some of the others, but keep in mind um, that if you've got an application where you need to do it, particularly for the first time, you can avail yourselves of our um, consulting services whereby we'll come on your computer screen and will help point you along the ways and we'll have Sarah some one of our other staff who are expert in this um, uh, help you get the data that you need um, downloaded. So without further ado I'll turn it over to Sarah and again thank you for watching uh, YouTube channel AirMod Training and um, again enjoy the show. Thank you. I'm Sarah with AirModTraining.com I'm going to show you how to download the meteorology data files needed to run AirMet and AirMinute in this training video. AirMet requires hourly surface and upper air sounding meteorological data. And if your station archives the one minute automated surface observing system wind data, referred to as ASOS wind data, you can input that data into AirMinute. The data we need are freely available from the National Centers for Environmental Information formerly known as the National Climatic Data Center. To download the data, you will need to know how to identify your stations. For the standard hourly surface data, you will need to know either the six-character United States Air Force catalog station number, referred to as the USAF catalog station number, or the five-digit Weather Bureau Army-Navy identification number, referred to as the WBAN ID. For the upper air sounding data, you have a few more options. You can obtain the data by using the five-digit World Meteorological Organization ID, referred to as the WMO ID, the five-digit WBAN ID, the state in which it's located, the latitude and longitude, or the country in which it's located. For the one-minute ASOS data, you will need to know the four-character International Civil Aviation Organization airport code. This is referred to as the ICAO airport code. The example run is based on 2014 meteorological data. The San Luis Valley Regional Airport slash Bergman Field located in Alamosa, Colorado is the station from where we get the standard hourly surface data and the one-minute ASOS wind data. So we need to know either the USAF catalog station number, the WBAN ID, or both to download the standard hourly surface data. The USAF catalog station number is 724620 and the WBAN ID is 23061. To download the one minute ASOS data, we need to know the ICAO airport code, which is KALS. The Grand Junction Regional Airport, located in Grand Junction, Colorado, is a station from where we get the upper air sounding data. Again, we have a few more options to use to be able to download the sounding data, but we are going to use the WBAN ID, which is 23066. First, I'm going to show you how to download the one minute ASOS wind data. And I was having issues downloading this data using Internet Explorer, so I'm using Google Chrome now and I haven't run into any issues so far. The one minute ASOS wind data are available from this NCEI, formerly the NCDC FTP site. And we'll put a link to this in the description and on the airmodtraining.com website. There are two sets of data here and each one is grouped by year. The one minute ASOS wind data we need are in the DSI 6405 format and are located in the directories that start with 6405. For our example run, we need to select the 6405-2014 folder. The data are available in monthly blocks starting with 64050 and then the station's ICAO airport code and then the four digit year and the two digit month. So to find our station, you can go to the find option and type the station's ICAO name. 
our station is KALS, and you can see the 12 data files for 2014. We'll download each of these files, and we're going to save them in the one minute subfolder under the Air Minute folder. So you need to right click, go to Save Link As, and again, we're saving it in the Air Minute one min folder. And we'll need to do this for all of the files. Since the data are saved in Greenwich time, we also need to go back and select the 2015 folder. Again, do a search for the station. And this time we only need to download the January data here. Going to File Explorer, you can see we have the 13 files that we just downloaded. And these data can be read by Air Minute as is. So we are finished preparing the one minute ASOS wind data. Next, I'm going to show you how to download the standard hourly surface data. These data are available from this NCEI, formerly the NCDC FTP site. We'll put a link to this in the description and on the airmodtraining.com website. And the data are in the integrated surface hourly data format, referred to as the ISHD format, and are located in these directories by year. So you need to select the year you want. For example, run, I'll scroll, scroll down to 2014. These data are ordered by each station's USAF catalog station number, then the WBAN ID, and if the station doesn't have a WBAN ID, then they fill this value with 99999, and the file name ends with the data collection year. So again, the easiest way to find your station is to go to the Find option, and you can use the USAF catalog station number and the WBAN ID. And I like to ensure that there was only one match. So you go to that file, right click, save link as, and we're going to save it in the AirMet surface folder. And since the data are saved in Greenwich time, we also need to get the 2015 data. Again, do a search for your station. And there should only be one match that comes up. And so you want to save the 2015 data. Going to File Explorer, you can see the two files we just downloaded. And these files are compressed with the .gz extension. And so the built-in program with Windows can't unzip this file, so you will need to have a third-party program that can do that. I downloaded 7-zip, which is a free program, and it is able to unzip these files. So I'm going to right-click on a file and go to the 7-zip option and go to Extract here. And I'll do that for the 2014 data. Now that we've unzipped the data, you can delete the .gz files. Since the data keyword in the input file that's used to call the hourly data is not repeatable, we need to combine these two files. So since I'm going to edit this file, I like to rename it so I don't overwrite it if by some chance I download the data again. So I'm just going to change this, the dash dot 20, I'm going to change that to an underscore and hit enter. So we need to open both files using a text editor. I'm going to open them with WordPad. So we only need to copy data from January 1st. So the file on the left is the 2014 data file. And this is the one where we need to copy the first few lines. So if you can see in here, we have the four digit year, then we have the month, day, and then the Greenwich hour. So I kind of just go through, it doesn't need to be exact, but it does need to be past the eight o'clock hour. 
So I just copy a large chunk from the from January 1st, right click and hit copy, and then we go to the 2014 file and we scroll all the way to the end and then right click and hit paste. So you can see we have the 2014 data and then we've added the 2015 data here. Don't forget to save the file and then you can close both files. And we no longer need this 2015 data file anymore. So now your hourly surface data file is ready for input into AirMet. Next I'm going to show you how to download the upper air sounding data. These data are available from the NOAA slash Earth System Research Laboratory Radiosound database website. And we'll have a link to this in the description below and at the airmodtraining.com website. So in the first option, we need to select the data period. So we need the data from 2014, so we set the year to 2014, month to one, day to one, hour to zero, through 2015, because we need to include that for the conversion to local time. And so again, we pick January 1st. And then this one, we want the whole day, so we're gonna scroll down and pick 23 there. So next we pick the sounding specific information. So the hours of access we want all time because we set the upper air selection to sunrise so it's going to pick the upper air sounding that's closest to sunrise. And we want all data levels and we're going to keep the wind units in knots. So under section 3 we picked that we're going to select the radio sound site by the WBAN ID and then you can hit continue data request. So under section four, you can select option one or option two. Since we know our station, we're going to keep option one set to no because we don't want a complete list of radio sounds for this site. So then under option two, we enter the WBAN ID, which is 23066. And then under section four, the sort order is kind of a moot point because we're only listing one station, so you can keep that as the default option. And then for input into AirMet, we want the FSL format in ASCII form. So then under section six, we can continue the data request. You can see the upper air sounding data here. You can either select all of the data or in Google Chrome, you have the option to right click and go to save as. And in Internet Explorer, I think you just need to go to edit and you can do the same type of option. So we're going to save this file as, and it's going to be in the AirMet UA directory, but we're going to rename this to 23066, which is the WBAN ID, and then underscore 14, just to note that it's the year 2014.fsl. And when you save it, it's going to append .txt to the end of it. So going to File Explorer, you can select this file, and go down to rename and you can remove the .txt and yes we are sure we want to change it and now your upper air data file is ready for input into AirMet. If you run into a problem with any part of your AirMod modeling project we offer online AirMod training help that you can purchase from AirModTraining.com during our session, you'll be able to ask us any question related to your AirMod modeling project. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, AirMod Training, so you'll be notified when we upload any new videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.